question forces us to assume that epsilon is less or equal than a constant times n to the one, uh, negative one seventh. So we cannot push it all the way down to one, but at least we can get epsilon being a power of n. And there is no reason for uh, this eight. It can be definitely reduced to, uh, to one coordinate. And this restriction is also an artifact of the proof. One can reduce it at the price of uh, making the proof more involved. But we, uh, we strived for the easiest case for the most, uh, for the clearest result. Okay, so how would one approach such a problem? Yeah. Of course, of course, if, if the, the entries are bounded, if the tails are light, or if the tails, even if the tails have a uniformly bounded fourth moment, this assumption, uh, yes. But uh, I wanted to separate the assumption, the moment type of assumption, from the assumption on the entries. The tails enter the discussion in only one way via this event. Uh, the, they have to be on the sphere, but the sphere uh, may be complex. Okay, so how would one prove this? And first, let's let's get rid of the notion of eigenvector here. This is uh, sensitive. The eigenvector is related to eigenvalues. And if an ensemble is complicated, we don't have precise information on eigenvalues. Also, if the matrix is not normal, the eigenvectors are not orthogonal, and this strips us from, most, from, most, from using most of the spectral methods. So let's get rid of the eigenvectors, and let's translate it to a different problem. So suppose that I consider a toy case where V on I is just zero. And then I have the equation of A minus lambda V is zero, but this means that I can reduce this equation to only the coordinates of I complement. And it means that this matrix has a non-trivial kernel. But what is this matrix? This is uh, the matrix with n rows and one minus epsilon n columns. This is rectangular, and if the matrix is random, it's uh, improbable that the, uh, the kernel would be non-trivial. We can play uh, on this fact and reduce the problem to the invertibility of rectangular matrices. Of course, this is a toy case, but we can relax it. And if we instead assume that uh, that the norm of vi 
is less than some delta, then we have again zero is a minus lambda v, which is a minus lambda v i complement plus a minus lambda v i. And uh, this means that a minus lambda v i here i complement and here is also i complement the l2 norm is less or equal than the norm of this matrix a minus lambda times the norm of vi2. Here I can use the triangle inequality, and if I have this event that the norm is small, I can bound it by m square root of n plus the absolute value of lambda times, and this way I assumed was less than delta, k. And this uh, lambda is a point in the spectrum, so its absolute value sh should not exceed the norm of the matrix, and we are, we are getting down to 2m square, root, uh, 2m square root of n times delta. So this is small. And if it is delta small, I can also approximate this lambda by some deterministic parameter. So I'll assume that absolute value of lambda, uh, lambda minus mu, is less than delta. And let me keep the result. Then we have the, the norm of A minus lambda I complement V I complement will be less than 4m square root of n times delta. Oh, sorry, yeah, minus lambda, minus mu. Mu now is deterministic. Of course, I, it's not uh, uh, completely deterministic. It should be close to lambda. Lambda is a random parameter. I don't know anything about its distribution. But we can uh, run a, an abs a delta net argument over all possible values of mu. We can take a disk of radius m square uh, m. And we can take a delta net in this disk so that any point m square root of n, sorry. Uh, any point can be delta approximated by the point of a net, and then we can take a union bound over this net. So the, these points belong to the net n delta, and the cardinality of n delta is bounded by, you can compare the area of the disk by the, uh, to the area of small disks around each point, it will be c square root of n over delta square. 
And this entropy cost, if we recall the lectures of Terry Tao, this entropy cost is negligible. Remember, we want to get something uh, to the power epsilon n. If epsilon n is reasonably big, then these two will be suppressed. Key. And then, after we have done it for a concrete set i, we can take the union bound over all possible sets i and get the following reduction. So proposition. That uh, for any mu complex and uh, sorry, not n uh, with absolute value of mu less or equal than m square root of n. Uh, the probability and uh, for any i in n of cardinality epsilon n, uh, the probability that the minimal singular value of a minus mu is less or equal than Uh, than for m delta square root of n is less than some number p0 less than 1. And then uh, the no gaps delocalization holds with probability uh, greater or equal than 1 minus, and then we have to include the entropy cost, which is C square root of n over delta squared p zero and times the cost of choosing i, which is n choose epsilon n. And this bound will be very important later. So first, how the minimal singular value got into picture? What we had here is that the image of this vector v reduced to the i complement falls into a small ball. But if I assume that the norm of vi is small and the norm of the whole vector v is 1, then the norm of uh, v reduced to i complement should be large. It should be at least 1 half. And this means that this matrix should, uh, sorry, I, no, uh, this matrix should have a small, smallest singular value. So if we, uh, we manage to get a uniform bound on the fact that the small singular value is small, we are in a good shape. And there are methods uh, to, to get such bound. The first one, um, the most straightforward one, is the epsilon net argument described in the lectures of Terry Tao. And uh, we can run it. After all, we in, ex, uh, what it, uh, sorry, not a minus mu, a minus mu, I complement this. Submatrix. Uh, 
if we this submatrix is has n rows and and one minus epsilon n columns. This is rectangular and we know to get the bounds on the smallest singular value of such matrices. So if we run an epsilon net argument, we will get some bound. Uh, so if, let's say, if a tilde is an n by m is an n by m matrix with nice entries centered uh, unit variance and finite fourth moment, then the probability that the minimal singular value of this A tilde is greater or equal than C square root of N will be uh, sorry, uh, will be bounded by uh, the exponential of the power of negative c prime and if and if m is less than some beta n for a small absolute constant beta. So we may try, this, uh, this result was basically proved in the lectures of Terry Tau, so let me save time on, on proving it again. We can look at this and try to, uh, to apply it to our situation, it's very close. We only need to take some union bounds, but we know how to take them. So what's the problems here? First, I want to keep the assumption about dependence. And this result require complete independence. Okay, maybe I, uh, if I am not so ambitious, if I restrict myself to Ginebra type ensembles and I assume complete independence, I can easily finish the proof of this theorem by applying the epsilon net argument. And then we hit the second obstacle, and the second obstacle, this beta should be small, and I am striving for a small epsilon, which means that the set I is small and I complement is almost the whole set one, et cetera, N, which means that the matrix is almost square. For almost square matrix, this is wrong. Uh, sorry, a lesser equal, of course. For almost square matrix, this is wrong, but a more elaborate analysis, uh, decomposition of into compressed and in, uh, several and incompressible vector, can yield some uh, lesser equal and lesser equal can yield some uh, bound on the probability that the smallest singular value is small. The problem is uh, with it is that the bound will be not this time with a probability exponential in n, but with probability exponential in n minus m. If n minus m is small, in particular if it is epsilon n, we have the probability exponential in epsilon n. And we have to beat the union bound which is super exponential in epsilon n. And 
then do not match. But maybe we have now we can do something smarter than taking the union bound overall uh, uh, overall possible uh, uh, choices of I. So we have so far we identified two obstacles. The epsilon net argument. So the first is insufficient independence the second obstacle is not sufficiently high probability although the epsilon net argument, at least the elaborate epsilon net argument with the splitting to compressible and incompressible vectors yields the exponential probability. We need a super exponential one. But then, suppose that we can overcome even this. Or suppose that our uh, problem is more moderate instead of having it for all i's we want to have it for a single eye. Let's compromise on everything. But even then, we would hit the, first, uh, the third obstacle. And to describe it, let's, let me recall uh, the main feature of the epsilon net argument. We run the small, uh, we play the small ball probability against the cardinality of the net. That means that we discretize the unit sphere, and if n, I say n tau is the tau net in the unit sphere, then uh, the cardinality of and real unit sphere, then the cardinality of n tau is bounded by a constant over tau to the power n. And if we are lucky, the, the probability that the norm of a tilde x2 is less or equal than, say, uh, delta. Uh, square root n is bounded by some constant c of delta, which uh, or c delta actually, to the power. No, th this will be m if it's in m sphere, and th this will be n. So a tilde is the matrix which is which has n rows and m columns. And then we multiply these two numbers, and so, uh, if n is greater than m, and delta is of the same order as tau, we win. And this, uh, this works perfectly in the real case. But suppose that our entries are real, then even in this case, the eigenvalues will be complex. So instead of the real sphere, we must consider the complex sphere. And for the complex sphere, the dimension, the real dimension jumps, and the 
uh, the size of the net also jumps from m to 2m. And then we multiply the exponential of 2m and the exponential of n. And if m and n are close, the entropy cost is prohibitively high. We cannot get anything from the epsilon net argument. Of course, there is one case where we don't have to go to the complex sphere. The real would be enough. This is the case of the Hermitian matrices. But for Hermitian matrices, we don't have independence. So we cannot run the epsilon net argument for a different reason. And all of this looks like uh, a hopeless case. It's the, the exercise in futility. So why did I discuss it here? First of all, it's not absolutely futile. We can, and we are going to use this uh, later in the proof as a piece of the puzzle when we assemble the puzzle together. We wouldn't use it for, uh, for the whole sphere, and we wouldn't use it for this matrix, but this, is, uh, this will uh, come handy in the critical moment. Second, this frontal attack which failed teaches us one thing. If we want to approach the no gaps delocalization via this proposition, if we want to get a strong bound uh, on uh, the smallest singular values of rectangular matrices with very high probability, super exponential probability, we need a good a very strong, small bound, a ball bound for such vectors. And we are going to spend the next lecture on developing some uh, these strong bounds, even if we don't know how to apply them yet. And let me stop. Questions? So I had a quick question. So you made this assumption that the imaginary parts were deterministic, and then you said later you would you know, expect, take the expectation over that. So how do the imaginary parts come into the bounds? Is it just in terms of the M, or? The imaginary part, the only way the imaginary part comes into the bounds is that I want to keep this ev uh, the event B A M the event that the norm of the matrix is small likely. Otherwise, it can be anything. Any other questions? Okay. So if not, we'll start again in ten minutes, and let's thank Mark again. <laughs>